Don't leave me hanging. It's go time. Hello everyone, this is Josh, and here we have the chilling conclusion of the best of three series between Mouse Straylock, the Blue Terran on the top of Scrap Station, and OGS. I'm typing it out for you. OGS Xenio, the Red Zerg on the right side of the map. This is a best of three quarterfinals being played for the Kaspersky New Year's StarCraft II Invitational with about $1,700 American prize pool. Even though all the players are European or South Korean, they decided to do the prize pool in American dollars, which I think is interesting. I didn't know we were still like the world currency, but um, yeah, anyway. <laughs> That's neither here nor there since we're playing this game in space and uh, we've got a nice Terran versus Zerg. Those first two games were incredible. Like, those were great games. I hope that this game on Scrap Station can live up to those first two because, man, Straylock really turned it around from game one to game two and just had a very impressive showing there on Lost Temple. Xenio only got like six Zerglings and one drone out of his base the entire game. It was crazy. You guys need to watch it if you haven't yet because I sort of just spoiled it, and I hope that you already watched it. Because this is game three. Why would you watch game three without game two and one? Doesn't make sense. Anyway, nothing exciting going on right now. That's why I'm kind of just rambling. Just lots of drones being produced for Xenia. It's probably going to be expanding first. There, he does send that drone. A lot of people play, uh, playing StarCraft 2 think that Scrap Station is Zerg favored because of this very reason right here. You can expand at your natural without too much pressure early game because the run distance is just so very long from your opponent's main over to your natural. And I mean, Zerg players are going to expand a lot of times anyway, even without that protection. But what is this? This is crazy. This is new. I don't know what this is. This is this is interesting. Mouse Straylock is building command center before he even builds a barracks, and Xenio is never going to see this because this slow, pokey overlord is way the hell over here. And Straylock's going to be able to expand to this island expo very, very quickly. That is kind of a gamble that I hardly ever see. Actually, almost never see. Uh, he will see this barracks coming up, though. It's I mean, it's a lot slow, so Xenio has to be like, okay, something's weird. Maybe Straylock hit the wrong button or something. Um, but uh, Xenio's gearing up for just a Zergling speed build, probably going to be transitioning into Roaches. I thought Banelings in that first map, but uh, since he's doing the exact same thing and he actually went Roaches first, I'll say he's doing Roaches. We'll see in a moment. Straylock, on the other hand, uh, man, he's just confusing me again here. He's getting his second gas up before Orbital Command. His Command Center expansion there is almost done building. We'll see what goes on after that. He's going to need another supply depot. No, he won't. This Command Center will give him some supply in just a moment. There it goes. 11 supply there for that Command Center. And now he loads up four SCVs. I like this a lot. And now he's going to go ahead and take off for this island. Xenio, on the other hand, already has Zerglings out. Several Zerglings. He does not want to be bunkered in to his main again, like uh, we saw previously in this series. And Straylock is just doing his regular scouting, making sure there's an expansion there, and that Xenio isn't just 7-pooling him or something like that. Although, Straylock would probably be dead if that were the case, because, uh... Oh, no, apparently it's laggy. They're playing this game on the North American server, um, because... Xenio is in South Korea, and Straylock is in Europe. They decided North America would be the most fair latency-wise. Apparently there's some lag. Surprise, surprise. Anyway, Straylock is walling off heavily here with some barracks and factories. Two factories, actually, and a single barracks. While this expansion is over here, unnoticed by Xenio still at this point. So Xenio has to be imagining that starports will be coming soon. He should probably start preparing for Banshees. Um, we see a queen being built, but that is just his first queen there at his natural. Banshees are kind of what he should be expecting here, um, seeing this huge wall off. But uh, he hasn't actually gotten any scouting information since that Overlord first flew by. He's going to poke in and has it rallied back out into space just to see if he's building anything over here on the left side of his base. Obviously not going to find anything. The starport is building right now, though, so maybe the Overlord's vision is long enough. No, it actually is not. I wonder how many times that's happened in the history of StarCraft II where an Overlord has just barely missed something or just barely seen something by a single pixel revealing an entire building or not in, in the case that we just saw. And Xenio still thinks something's up, is finally going to send an overlord up here to the top of the map. That is so good for him to be able to know that that expansion is there. If we look at the income tab, uh, Strelik is still actually pretty far behind, but 
um, he's getting, you know, he's got that third gas up, Straylock does, and Xenio is just now getting his third built, so he's ahead on gas right now, but uh, minerals are still pretty close there. Two orbital commands, you'd think uh, those mules would make the difference there, but anyway, Hellions being produced out of both of these factories right now, pre-igniter upgrade, adding this blue flame to those Hellions. We are seeing a Banshee now and a Cloak being researched, so is Xenio going to be prepared? His only anti-air units are Queens right now. He's only got three on the map. He's getting a lair right now so he can start making Overseers, but this Banshee could be over there with Cloak sooner than Xenio is ready for it. We'll see. We shall see. These Hellions move out, torch those two Zerglings instantly, and laugh to themselves as they continue on. Xenio is hiding a drone down here at the Gold Expansion. He's almost got 300 minerals, can only mean one thing. Can only mean possibly more than one thing. Gonna keep that drone selected there at the bottom just to see if he turns into a hatchery. But uh, he's over 300 minerals again. Not sure what's going on. There goes the hatchery. Hooray! Five Hellions moving now against five Roaches. I think Roaches win that battle as long as uh, Strelok <laughs> neglects his micro, but uh, he should just run away. There's no need to tackle that head on with those Hellions. Anyway, Cloaked Banshee. Actually, the first non-cloakable Banshee, since the upgrade is not complete, is showing up at Xenio's main here. Uh, those Hellions are back at the Zelnaga Tower. Oh, he's going to start picking on these poor little drones. There's only one queen here to defend against this. There's a Baneling that's being built. Obviously, Banelings can't hit air. Cloak is now finished, so Xenio is going to go ahead and cloak up before this Banshee goes down. The lair is complete, though, so Overseers could be showing up any time. Now there's a single Overseer coming over. There's still just not much anti-air except for these two Queens, though, so Strelok should be able to maneuver around this Overseer long enough to keep this Banshee alive, especially if he can just drag it down here to the natural, and a second Banshee is arriving. Gonna leave him in picture in picture while I watch this first one possibly be killed by these Queens. Uh, is he gonna get another drone kill? Yes, he will. He'll probably get several more drone kills. Uh, killing these ones on gas is a great idea because sometimes it's hard to remember to put them back. Now we go over to this other Banshee. It did manage to get three kills. Uh, the other Banshee, the original, actually going down there to that Queen Fire. And Xenio's hatchery down here at the gold is complete. Xenio knows that this hatchery... This is not a hatchery, this is an orbital command. Xenio knows that this orbital command exists on this island. So he's starting to get spore crawlers now to defend against Banshees and needs something... Pneumatized Carapace is the first good step. I was thinking Overlord Ventral Sacks, but um, you know he could be getting that soon. It's a pretty heavy gas investment, though. He will eventually need to go kill that base, I think. Thors are already out for Straylock. He is just building everything he can here. Look at this. More production structures going down now. Two more barracks here being added. Tech Lab. Uh, buh, buh, buh. What else is going on? More Banshees? Nope. Vikings. Going to be killing some Overlords and any kind of anti-air or air units rather that Xenio actually ends up building the spire is now complete so mutalisks could be making their debut in this game there they are actually I thought I saw them building earlier here are some hellions being attacked by mutalisks obviously the hellions cannot fight back so they're gonna run home to these three thors and hope that the giant mech units can defend them uh, I like this pooping creep here at the natural so Australia cannot expand over there Single Viking just flying around here, going to be able to spot this Overlord, probably, and kill it. I think he can see it already, yeah. Anyway, Xenio just flying around with his Mutalisks. He's a 113 supply against 103 supply from Straylock. I'm surprised Straylock's that low. Uh, he hasn't actually lost hardly any units. If we look at units lost, Xenio has lost 21 to only 3 of Straylock, but... Uh, the income tab makes a huge difference. Xenia way ahead on Harvesters, as he has been pretty much every single game of this series. This Overlord is finally going to go down to this Viking, and Xenia will be capped? Not quite. But, you know, more Overlords, very easy to build. And look at that huge, that is a huge difference. 67 Harvesters, 49 there. That mineral count is almost double. Gas is about even, but geez, those minerals make a massive difference, especially with this high yield. And no gas even being built here. He's just putting every drone he's got on those minerals right there. This Banshee cloaks um, kind of prematurely. I'm not sure where he's headed. Oh, he cloaked early, so these Mutalists couldn't come destroy him. Very nice. He's going to be able to kill off this Ling, get that Zelnaga Tower cleared up. And there he goes. He will continue on. He's got about 60 energy left. Not sure where he's going to head with it. Does he know about this high yield yet? He 
does not. He's just going there on gut instinct. He hasn't scanned or sent an SCV or anything. He's just like, okay, Xenio probably expanded again because on that first map, Zenlaga Caverns, he expanded to like 50 different places. So he just queues up a bunch of drone kills right there. There's no overseer around here. There's not even an overlord around here. So these mutalisks uh, flying in are just going to have to wait for this Banshee to run out of energy. He's still got about 30 left. The spore crawler's not going to be done anytime soon. It's only about halfway done now. Uh, this Banshee should be safely out of there. Oh, there's the overseer, though. So uh, he came out of nowhere, saved the day. Banshee did get several kills there, though. Straylock is now moving out of his base. Look at this huge mech army he's been massing while all these little Banshee shenanigans have been going on and Vikings hunting down overlords, things like that. Straylock doing a pretty good job here utilizing that uh, Terran utility units. Uh, Xenio still at 168 supply, though. Straylock still at 140.